Scientists have long warned about the effects of plastic pollution in the world's oceans. Now, a review of studies shows that despite awareness, the problem is getting worse. The Worldwide Fund for Nature warns that pollution will quadruple by 2050. The issue is high on the agenda at this week's Ocean uh, One Ocean Summit in France. Researchers and industry leaders from more than 40 countries are discussing ways to better protect the oceans. The world is warming and the polar ice caps are melting and the oceans they are melting into are filling with plastic. A review by the WWF warned the substance has reached every part of the ocean. We definitely reached the point where the system is overloaded and where we enter or where we walk the edge because the problem seems to become or will grow bigger over the couple of coming years because the producers of plastic already stated that they will produce more. So we, we fear that more plastic will enter the oceans and decommission in the, in the oceans to micro and nanoplastic, which creates the biggest problems. The temperatures across the oceans pose yet more problems. US researchers found out the hottest temperatures recorded in the oceans between 1870 and 1919 and looked at how often the seas around the world beat that range in the years that followed. They found that in the year 1900, the oceans hit that peak less than 1% of the time. But by 2019, temperatures across the world's seas beat that record 57% of the time. Animals like polar bears are watching their habitats disappear. The bears could be all but lost by the end of the century. The heat is pushing species such as great white sharks into new waters. This means they eat other animals like sea otters, causing their decline. Increases in the heat of the oceans is the main cause of coral bleaching. Bleach reefs are more likely to die. The outlook for the oceans and the creatures living within them is a troubling one. And DW Environment reporter Ajit Naranjan, who helped file that report, is with me now for more. Good to see you. Our oceans are now more polluted and warmer, it seems, than at any time in history. Uh, what does that mean? How bad is it? So things that used to be seen as extreme are now considered normal. And I guess when we're older, we'll look back on these temperatures and think that they were actually very cool relative to what we'll experience in the future. One scientist told me yesterday, one of the study authors, said that extreme climate change is not some hypothetical future possibility, but it's an observed historical fact. The climate has already changed. And, I mean, you might think, well, why should we actually care about this? I mean, sea turtles, otters, on a personal level, it's not something that necessarily moves me. But it's important to remember that this hurts humans too. This is about people as well. And I think some, it's about three billion people in the world who rely on fish as their primary source of protein. This matters. It's not just about the animals. And of course, the, the oceans affect the climate. It's all one big system. Uh, the damage is so severe uh, already. What are the chances that it can actually be rolled back? There's a lot that we unfortunately cannot roll back. So some of the changes that have happened are kind of there to stay. All we can do is maybe think about the future and how we, how we address that. The plastics, the, the WWF study for, about plastic found that even if we stopped polluting the oceans with more plastic today, the amount of microplastics would double roughly in the next few decades as previous plastics break down. On the other hand, it's also important to remember that some of the fish populations and other species, they could be cared for with good conservation. I mean, if there's species that are being hurt by climate change and plastic pollution, and on top of that, we're overfishing them. I mean, there are some things we can do to make sure that they do recover. Now, there's this summit being held in Brest in France, uh, dealing with the oceans. What are the decision makers that are attending that summit, that ocean summit, what are they hoping to achieve? So what we're going to be hearing this morning and what kind of the signs of the last couple of days have been is that the main focus is on making better pledges to cut pollution, particularly about plastic, to protect more areas of the sea and to, of course, tackle climate change. Now, one thing conservation groups are really hoping to see is kind of this push to kickstart this process to get this UN treaty, which will be kind of discussed next month, 
a legally binding treaty to protect the high seas. And this is important because even though countries do kind of have some level of environmental governments about their, the water surrounding them, there's huge stretches of the ocean that kind of one scientist put it to me that it's basically the Wild West. There's so little care taken about it that people can almost, it feels like people can do anything. Well, let's see what that legally binding treaty turns into. Ajit, thank you very much for your insights. Our environment reporter, Ajit Naranjan.